He who observed the fasts of the month of Ramadan out of sincerity and hoping for the reward from Allah, he will have his past sins forgiven. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. Welcome, oh Ramadan, it is Ramadan, it is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing the topic, Sighting of the Moon, Part 2. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakir, perhaps you could shed some light on the issue of why it is that the uh, Muslims of the world are not united as regards to the fasting and the celebration of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. As far as Muslims throughout the world be united in starting the month of Ramadan, ending the month of Ramadan and celebrating Eid, there are scholars which are divided with one group of scholars who say that throughout the world you should follow the timing of Makkah so if Makkah starts the month of Ramadan everyone throughout the world should follow Ramadan if Makkah ends Ramadan then everyone throughout the world should end Ramadan and if Makkah celebrates Eid then everyone else in the world should celebrate Eid and this is the view even of Sheikh bin Baz when a person asked him that he was a Saudi who traveled to Spain and he said that I have been fasting according to the calendar of Makkah. And in Makkah, if they started fasting, I started fasting in Spain according to Makkah and ended fasting according to Makkah and celebrated either according to Makkah. Is it right? And Sheikh bin Bas said, there's no problem, it is right, because Makkah is a holy city, etc. But the other group of scholars, they disagree and they say that the timings should be according to the area. There should be time zones, as Allah says in the Quran. In Surah Bakhara, chapter number 2, verse number 185, that if you sight the moon, so those who sight the moon, those who witness the moon, or those who are present at home, in the month, they should fast. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, one number 3 in the book of fasting, hadith number 1907 and 1909, the Prophet said that when you see the new moon of Ramadan, then you start your fast, and when you see the new moon of Shawwal, then you end the fast. So based on this, the people of that area should see the moon, and if that area is common, it may be one city, it may be a full country, or a couple of countries together, that is right ruling. Really. And Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah says that you cannot have that all together. You cannot have all the Muslims in the world fasting together, and he also says, that even according to scientific evidence, even according to astronomical evidence, it's not possible that all the Muslims throughout the world can fast on one day. Because the moon cannot be sighted altogether on one day. There has to be difference. So it's illogical to say that we should fast altogether. And the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Tirmidhi, Book of Fasting, Hadith number 697, that the fast is when you all fast. And the breaking of fast is when you all break the fast. And the day of sacrifice is when all the people sacrifice. So as long as people of that area, they fast, it is sufficient that is fasting. And when people of that area, that locality, that city or country, if they break the fast, then break the fast. Because as we see that there is no difference of opinion as far as the timings of sun is concerned. As far as starting of the each day, as far as when the day starts and the day ends, there is no difference of opinion. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 187. It says that 
eat and drink until the white thread of dawn is distinguished from the black thread and fast till the night falls until the sun sets so here in east part of the world the sun sets earlier that does not mean because in malaysia the sun sets earlier in bombay i will end my fast earlier so that means the people in makkah also should end it early and if in the western world the sun sets a bit late i also end my fast late there is an unanimous agreement throughout the world that you have to follow the timing of the sun according to your local timing if the sun sets in your area then you stop fasting and you can eat if the dawn breaks in your area then you stop eating and you start fasting there is no difference of opinion so as we follow the sun we should even follow the moon the same way imagine if we celebrate eid if the new moon of shawwal is sighted in makkah and we celebrate eid maybe in america in the west the moon may have been sighted one day earlier that means they have to celebrate eid one day later and in pakistan or india the new moon will be sighted one or two days later so does it mean that they have to celebrate eid in the month of ramadan and imagine those people if they have for a makkah time i mean they'll have to fast even on the day of eid in america where the moon may be seen monday earlier that means they will have to fast on the day of eid which is haram prophet said you cannot fast on the day of eid so here we realize that we have to follow the same rule as we follow for the timing of the sun otherwise there will be a big chaos and it will not be practically possible and many people who say that you know how is it possible that you know muslims in different parts of the world are eating on different days it's normal we are used to having different timings in the sun the morning time when it's day time in india it is night time in america we don't say oh, how is the night time there and day time here i mean night time here day time there we don't say oh what a stupid thing that people are united because that is the way it is the timing of the sun differ and the timing of the sun in the full world it differs by 24 hours 0 minute to 24 hours it depends upon which latitude is your area if it is the same longitude then the timing would be same and the world is divided with 360 degrees 360 longitudes each longitude it differs by 4 minutes so if you travel by 15 longitudes then there will be difference of one hour so 360 multiplied by 4 comes to 1440 minutes that's equal to one full day so the world is divided into time zones now just for the betterment for ease what we do that though india has got more than 15 degrees longitude yet the time is common they take a center point and they say whether it's bombay or gujarat one end of india or whether it's assam the other end of india the breadth yet they follow the same timing they take the central time but in countries like usa the width is much more it is more than 30 degrees the timing may differ more than 2 hours but they have approximately four time zones the time in los angeles is 2 hours earlier than the time in new york so it differs so there it will be imagine person phone from new york to los angeles and he wonders that they are 2 hours earlier but this is how the time zones are divided and people are living with it the same way people fail to realize that as far as scientific evidence for moon is concerned the new moon can differ by one or two days it is scientific it's not possible that the new moon can occur throughout the world on the same day it's not possible it is unscientific and i had just spoken to a scientist who was specialized in the field of astronomy just london and been there and he told me that one or two days is common sometimes there can even be a difference of 3 days sighting the moon in one part of the world to the other part of the world it can be a difference even of 3 days and once in a blue moon it can even go up to 4 days it may happen i don't once in thousand years i don't know he has some calculation which i don't understand but normally differing by one or two days is common it is scientific the new moon cannot be sighted on the same day throughout the world how the sun cannot rise on the same day throughout the world so here people fail to realize that celebrating same day throughout the world will be unscientific and it will be un-islamic also because when you have to have two witnesses to sight only when two witnesses sight as the beloved prophet said can the people of that area celebrate 
what we can have for convenience, people in a few cities can have one area of sighting the moon, or one full country can have one common area of sighting the moon, or a couple of countries if they're close and fall in the same area, they can have. But throughout the world, it's not possible, and it is not even scientific. So I agree with Sheikh Ibn Taymi and Sheikh Utaymi when they say that it's not possible to have sighting of the moon throughout the world on the same day. Okay. Zahlak. So from your answer, Dr. Zakir, it's clear that there can be some differences from country to country in regarding the sighting of the moon, following of the Eid and starting and the end of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. What's the ruling regarding people in the same city differing regarding Eid and uh, Ramadan, etc.? As far as people differing in the same city, the beloved Prophet ﷺ was very clear. It's clearly mentioned in the Hadith of Tirmidhi, in the Book of Fasting, Hadith number 697, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the fast is the day when you all fast, mean the whole Muslim community fast. And the break of fast is the day when you break the fast. And the day of sacrifice is the day you sacrifice. I mean, all of you sacrifice, indicating that it should be in congregation. People of the same city cannot differ, because the city is not that big, where the sighting of moon will differ. So the area of sighting of the moon has to cover at least one city. I don't know of any city in the world which is so big that covers... Uh, you know, a very large area. There can be occasions when few cities can be clubbed together and they can have the same area of sighting of moon. Or the full country can, as I mentioned earlier, can have the same sighting of moon. Or there can be a few countries close to each other, you know, may have the same sighting of moon. But as far as the city is concerned, they should have the same sighting of moon. A person cannot differ, like in the same city, one person starting Ramadan today, other person starting tomorrow, it's not permissible. All have to start Ramadan together and Ramadan together and celebrate it together. This is very logical and straightforward. It's not rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> so dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, join us after this short break. It is The ultimate aim of education in Islam is to liberate you, make you a liberated man and a woman because an educated mind cannot be fooled. An educated mind cannot be exploited. And Muhammad وسلم, will give the example, طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم ومسلم. Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every single Muslim. There are three reasons why we commit sin. What is this sin? If you are looking around any woman in the street, you will be suffering, man. You will be suffering. Because of the sins, they were drowned in the flood. The sins in Arabic are called ma'asi, nunub, isuq, and asyan. He commands the volcano erupt now. The volcano will erupt. Because what is more important to you is your is Lord. Your Lord. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the show Ramadan A Date with Dr. Zakir. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we're discussing the topic Sighting of the Moon. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakir, there are many non Muslims, no doubt, and I have met some of them, who are confused and they often ask themselves, what sort of a religion is this in which um, people of the same city, you know, are not united upon this wonderful day, this celebration of Eid and also the beginning and the ending of Ramadan? I would really appreciate it if you could comment on that. I do agree with you that many a time we Muslims make a laughing stock of ourselves. That they wonder what sort of religion is this Islam where people are united in the same city, they have two different days of Eid. Sometimes they have three days. Three different days of Eid. Today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, three different days of Eid. So they wonder what sort of religion is this. And for this, as I explained to you in the earlier two answers, Islam is very clear. There is an animal decision. But we Muslims are to blame. It is not Islam. We Muslims are to blame 
because the Prophet Muhammad was very clear that we should be united. The Quran is very clear. It is we Muslims who are to blame that we are divided. The problem is not in Islam. The problem is in us Muslims. The problem is that we have many Hilal committees. Many. One city has three, four Hilal committees. Or many times there is one Hilal committee, but there are subdivisions. You know, each belong to one group. So the problem is in us Muslims. We have many Hilal committees. Each belong to one group, one sect. Each fighting among themselves. Or one Hilal committee having subdivisions. So what happens? That there is ego problem between them. And that happens in many parts of the world, whether it be USA, whether it be UK, whether it be Pakistan, whether it be India. And in Bombay it has happened several times that Eid is celebrated on two different days, sometimes even three different days. And what happens? That they have ego problem. That if the witness of group or Hilal Committee A is there and Hilal Committee B gets angry or maybe they want that we should announce first and if Hilal Committee A announces first, B out of the way will differ to prove that we are stronger and they want to show who has a bigger following. So this is a big fitna. And because of their own ego, the problem we have in Muslim Ummah is that we Muslims, we are being troubled and we are not able to follow our deen because of these groups. So the main problem is the Hilal committees because of the ego problem between themselves. And it has happened several times in several parts of the world that they purposely differ. If group A announces, group B will go out of the way to differ. So, you know, what we should have, we should get together. And no problem. For the betterment of the Ummah, we should let our ego go down. And we should come together on a common platform. And whoever has more ego, let him lead, no problem. As long as we unitedly celebrate the Eid. As the Prophet said, you fast when all the people fast. You break the fast when all the people break the fast. You celebrate Eid and all the people celebrate Eid. So if you let the ego be reduced and let us come together and see to celebrate the Eid together, then this problem, otherwise this problem will never be solved. And previously there used to be two different dates. Now third date has cropped up because of the people following Saudi, which I discussed in my earlier two answers. That you know, now they say that, okay, we will follow the time of Saudi Arabia, that's another problem. And that has cropped up recently, it has become more. And we find that in Canada, in UK, in USA, there are three days of Eid. The infighting amongst the local Hilal committee is one problem, and some people saying we'll follow Saudi Arabia, that's another problem. So they have further increased the problem. So we Muslims should be, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 3, wa tasimu bi habdillah jamia wala tafarakku. Hold the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. The rope of Allah is the glorious Quran and the Sai Hadith. So we should hold to it strongly and be not divided. SubhanAllah. What we need to do is bring back the logic of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and when he was placing the black stone, remember the, the story? That's right. That's if we could have that back, that right. it would be great. And we see this problem is very little in the Gulf countries. In Saudi Arabia, there's only one committee with whatever they say everyone follows. And fortunately, even the countries around them, whether it be UAE, whether it be Bahrain, they follow Saudi Arabia because they fall in the same area. It's not that big countries. So there, there's no problem and we are not laughing stock. They celebrate on one day. When they announce, everyone follows. It's Eid. When they say Ramadan, everyone follows. So they are the best example, the Gulf countries. We Muslims, in the non-Muslim countries, we have a problem. We try to show off an ego, etc. Try to defer that as a problem. So we should follow the example of the Gulf countries. Alhamdulillah, they're united. And they have won, at least as far as the sighting of the moon is concerned. Inshallah, it should improve uh, the more educated our, our youth get. And Inshallah. start Inshallah. taking over the place. Inshallah. 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 Uh, well, Doctor, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for regarding the interview section. Now we're going to move on to the question and answers on the topic of sighting of the moon. Right, well, the first question we have from one of our respected viewers is, why do Muslims follow the lunar calendar instead of the solar calendar? There are various reasons why we follow the lunar calendar. And following lunar calendar is much more beneficial as compared to solar calendar. Because as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Bakhra, chapter number 2, verse 189, that when they ask thee concerning new moons, say that they are signs for marking the fixed period of time as far as the affairs of men are concerned and pilgrimage. So in lunar calendar, what we have, that every year the time 
and the climate, if we follow the solar calendar, for example, Ramadan or Hajj, will come in the same season. It will come in the same month of the solar calendar, but the season would be the same, it would not change. But if we follow the lunar calendar, if the lunar month is the same, it keeps on changing the climate. So, because the difference between the lunar and the solar calendar is 11 days, approximately. The lunar calendar is 11 days less than the solar calendar. So, if we follow the solar calendar, if suppose Ramadan comes in a country in winter, throughout his life, Ramadan will come in winter. If in one part of the world, Ramadan is in summer, throughout the world it will be in summer. So, it will be a disadvantage. Someone will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why am I living in a country where Ramadan is always in summer? Or someone will say, oh, it's good, Ramadan is always in winter. Some people will fast the full Ramadan, the full life, always having long days. Some people have short days. So when we follow the lunar calendar, in approximately 33 years of your life, we have Ramadan coming in all the seasons of the year. Sometimes it will be in summer, sometimes in winter, sometimes in autumn, sometimes the days will be short, sometimes the days will be long, or it will be average throughout your life. So this is, alhamdulillah, scientific. So to follow the lunar calendar is beneficial. We have Hajj in all the seasons, we have Ramadan in all the seasons, we have Eid in all the seasons. So no one can complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have taste of all the seasons to follow Ramadan and to keep the fast and as well as to celebrate Eid. So it's more scientific to follow the lunar calendar as compared to following the solar calendar. Jazakallah, Dr. Zaki. Next question and uh, unfortunately today, last question. Can the testimony of a woman be accepted with regards to sighting of the moon for Ramadan? As far as accepting the testimony of women for sighting of a moon is concerned, the difference of opinion, according to the Hanafis, or Hanafi school of thought, if it's a cloudy day, then the testimony of a woman can be accepted. The testimony of a woman can also be accepted by the humblies, and one group of Shafis also accepts the testimony. Whereas the other group of Shafis, they say that testimony of the woman cannot be accepted, and the Malikis are unanimous that testimony of women cannot be accepted. So there are two groups of scholars. One group says that it can be accepted, one they say it cannot be accepted. And Sheikh Utaimi, may Allah have mercy on him, he says that the testimony of women cannot be accepted. And he gives reasons for that. He says that because the Quran says that there should be two just witnesses. And that Arabic word used in the Hadith of uh, Tirmidhi, Book of Fasting, Hadith number 2118, it says Shahidain. So he says the woman is a shahida, not a shahid. So based on that argument, he says that woman testimony cannot be accepted. The other group of scholars, they said, can be accepted. And as far as the Arabic word is concerned, that many a time when the male word is used, the even woman is included. So to just pick on the word and say that, so the other group of scholars say that it's not right to pick on the word and say, because it's shahidain, a woman cannot be accepted. And furthermore, they say, the group which says that woman testimony can be accepted, they say that when we ask a woman that which is the direction of Qibla, and the woman shows the direction, but naturally we follow it. And we can ask the timings of Salah to women if you go to a foreign land, that which is the timing of Salah, and she tells the timing, it's accepted. So when we accept this, why can't we accept the sighting of the moon? That's what they argue. And further they argue that many of the hadith have been narrated only by one narrator, the chain of narration. And... Hazrat Aisha Amin Allah repeated her, the wife of the Prophet, she alone has narrated no less than 2,220 ahadith. So when her alone witness is accepted, even this hadith of the sighting of the moon is hadith of Hazrat Aisha Amin Allah repeated her. So when you can accept her narration alone, so why can't we accept the shahada of the moon? So this argument is very strong, you know, that when we can accept that Hazrat Aisha Amin Allah repeated her, when she narrated the hadith of sighting of the moon, and we accept the hadith, so why can't we accept when she says that she has seen the moon? So the group which says that woman's testimony can be accepted is much more acceptable, though there is a difference of opinion in this aspect. Well, Jazakallah here for your um, excellent answers today, Dr. Zaki Naik. And I think it's, it's a very controversial issue amongst many Muslims, and I pray and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us um, lessen the, di the difficulties and the differences between us so we can all celebrate Eid in each city. We can all celebrate Eid together and we won't be the laughing stock of any non-Muslims or such like, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, do join us again tomorrow at the same time when we'll be discussing the topic Zakat al-Fitra and Eid al-Fitra. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. حافظين ذاكرين
قانتين خاشعين مسلمين مؤمنين للإله عابدين شهونا صوم وعتق وقنوت به صدق يومنا صبر ورق بدموع البائس رمضان قد أهلت بالصيام وأقل مصعدا أهلا وفي الله A friendly message by Dr. Zahir, the last testament of God. It is a proclamation to humanity, a fountain of mercy and wisdom, a guide to the erring, a warning to the heedless, an assurance to those in doubt, a solace to the suffering, a hope to those in despair. Al-Quran, the most positive book in the world, the final message of God to humanity. Let's read it. Understand it and follow it. Peace TV, the solution for humanity.